Hey, hey, welcome to Unleash Your Inner Badass, episode number 34. And with us today, we all, all the beaches are here. I'm Fran Loebscher. We have Kat Krasilnikov, Carrie Hyam, Adrian Lindine, and Brandy Shaver. Um, and in these episodes, we share uh, mindset tips to help you stop failing in your business um, and start living the life that you dream of and help you help, help you shift from you know, the the things that we know are keeping you stuck so that you can actually start thriving in life and thriving in your business. Um, and one thing that I want to talk about is what it takes to be a badass, what it takes to level up, you know, and start hitting the goals that you want to, that you want to hit. Um, and I want to share with you, and I actually heard this because it was a great way of describing it, um, and actually it was an Ed Milet podcast. So I'll give Ed Milet credit where credit is due. Um, because I want to, so I want to ask you if you, you have these huge goals. I know you have these massive goals and maybe you, you know, you want to hit, you know, um, a million dollars. Maybe you want to hit seven figures. Maybe you want to hit eight figures, whatever it is that you want to hit. And so as you start growing towards the, those goals and you start building a massive team and earning more money and start building that lifestyle, um, and then something might happen, okay, and you just start sliding back, okay. You, you start moving towards that and then something happens and you start sliding back. And I want you to think about your, it, this all comes down to your identity and how you think of yourself, okay. And I want you to start thinking of your identity mm -hmm. as a thermostat. And when you, um, you know, when you set your thermostat to, I'm going to say 20 degrees, okay, or 15, 18 degrees because I work in Celsius and whatever that is in Fahrenheit, I don't know, but you have it set to whatever it is in the house. Um, and as soon as it gets hot, then maybe the air con is going to kick in. And as soon as it gets cold, the heating is going to kick in to keep it at that level. But your house is always going to be at that level. And so your identity is very similar. And right now you are maybe at the identity that you are, whatever your identity is, that, you know, you are, you're an entrepreneur, you are chugging along, you are getting some sales, you're recruiting some people, you're not yet that leader, you're not yet there. And what happens is as you start growing and as you start stepping into the leadership role, that thermostat kicks in and it brings you straight back down again like straight back down again, because you haven't shifted your identity. You haven't grown your identity. You haven't grown and, bec and become the person who is that top leader, that person who is, I'm all up here, but that person who is, um, you know, who, who is a, a, a eight-figure earner, that person who has the identity of, you know, who, who has stepped into, the, into your bigger shoes. And so what happens and what you need to do is raise that thermostat. You need to lift, you need to shift and, and raise your identity to that person. What happens is when you, when you start, because your identity is, is how you think of yourself. It is who you are. And as you, you know, as you start growing and you start stepping into those bigger shoes, your identity, like the thermostat, your identity suddenly thinks, no, 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 no. It actually dies. It has to die in order to step into the bigger shoes. And it doesn't want to die. It wants to, it wants to stay there because it means that you as a person, the way that it knows you, you and the way that you know yourself has to die in order to step into the bigger shoes. So let me know. If you can relate to this at all, I didn't actually even ask if you're joining us, let us know who you are, let us know where you're coming in from. But let, let me know if you can relate to this idea that every time you, you grow, every time you um, start, um, you know, stepping into bigger shoes, every time you, 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 um, you feel like you are growing, you you find yourself just falling back again. 
because that that identity is trying to keep is trying to keep you there is trying to keep you safe is and it doesn't want to die and I can I can know that Kat has got things that she wants to say. <laughs> I always see her face smiling. Um, yeah, yeah, I want to know, yeah. I wanna know how, how, this, how this makes you feel because we were we were talking you know through this on a, on a on one of our seven figure calls and it suddenly made so much sense to to our students is that they're still hanging on to the whole the old identity. Their thermostat is set too low. I actually have so much i can add to yeah. this i probably could write a book about it <laughs> and so many things right now going through my mind because i've been through this process myself and i know how it feels when you're you know investing into mentorship you start starting implementing higher level strategies and you think well it's my actions gu will guarantee the results, right? Because these people before me did exact same thing and it worked for them. But for some reason, it wasn't working for me. And I was questioning like, what's going on? Am I doing something wrong? So when I realized that I wasn't doing anything wrong, I was being still the same, you know, postal clerk working for not minimum wage. It was okay wage, right? But I had the mentality of an employee and now I had to become um, a business owner. Not only that, I had to start thinking of myself as the person I wanted to be. And this is the hardest part because we've been creating our current identity for so long right? For many, many years, it's like engraved in our, I don't know, subconscious, because it's also comfortable. Like Fran said, as soon as your brain sense that you're about to step into something bigger and unknown, and it's scary, it's going to do whatever it takes to pull you back into that comfort, into the known, because it's provided you with security and stability, even though it's not your dream life, right? But it's been comfortable and secure. And we hold on to that identity, almost like our life depends on it when it's quite the opposite. So what I had to do, um, I had to figure out how to step into bigger shoes. And it was scary, right? And I nobody actually teaches like how to do them. I and there's a lot of books, there's a lot of podcasts and stories. And I kind of like had to, um, put it piece by piece where it made sense for me, right? We read a book and it's like, oh, this makes sense for me. This doesn't. So you kind of like have to figure it out your blueprint. <laughs> I don't think there is like, oh, here's what you need to do. And then you grow into a leader. So it's in very individual for every person. That's what it makes it so challenging. So here's what I noticed that mm -hmm. and what helped me. There is a huge gap when we start doing this work between knowing something and actually believing it. Like, well, yeah, I know I need to be a leader. I know that I'm a badass. I know that I can do it. But actually believing it, it's totally different, different thing. So a lot of us know, right? Oh, I know I need to be doing this. Oh, I know I need to feel that way. Oh, I know this and that. But actually believing that that's true, not so much. So how to bridge that gap between knowing and believing, it comes through your feelings, like how you feel about yourself. That's pretty much what your identity is all about. And the good part, our feelings is the only thing we can control in all of our journey. <laughs> That's the only thing we can control. And we actually can change how we feel at any given moment. And you don't need, you know, uh, go through some fancy, I don't know, breath work or meditation or whatever. I, it can help you, right? But you can't go to like me and friend go to Joe Dispenza seven day retreats once or twice a year. You can't rely on that, right? It's great. It boosts your belief so much and you can ride on it three, four months at a time, but you can't depend on it. You have kind of like build your own technique. Like how can I change how I feel right now? Right. Because I'm falling into my old identity. How can I flip that switch and feel like a badass at any given moment? So it's kind of like what you have to figure it out. And like I said, you don't have to 
go to Joe Dispenza events or <laughs> meditate for five hours or do three hour breath work. I mean, it can help you, <laughs> but you shouldn't depend on it, right? You can figure out what's working for you in like three minute time without traveling or without whatever. Mm -hmm. so I and one thing that I want to add is that there is kind of a little hack for those of you where you're like, well, where do I even start? Like, where do I even start in stepping into these bigger shoes? A lot of times when we we feel like we're here and, and we've talked about this on previous um, podcasts in Unleash Your Inner Badass podcast where there's an internal version of ourselves and there's an external version of ourselves. There's the external version of ourselves that you know, is taking action and is kind of the face of what other people see. But internally, it's our thoughts, it's our feelings, it's all of those things. And so one way that we can hack this process is by identifying small wins. So many times when we step into, we're like, oh, I'm going to be a leader and I'm going to go out and I'm going to do these things. We start taking action and we think, oh, I have to have the results of a leader the second I step into these shoes, when that's not actually how it works. How it works is we have to take a baby step right into becoming that leader. We might do a big thing that feels like a huge, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did this thing. But just doing that thing one time doesn't mean that we're suddenly going to have all of these millions of people that like are following us and attracted to us and enrolling in our business. And so instead, what we need to focus on is what did work. Sometimes it's just the smallest things, right? you got to like, you got to, you had someone watch, right? You had someone reach out. You had, it's, it's, it's the little things that you have to start identifying as the wins. Because once you start identifying the small wins, winning leads to more winning. And so you start to identify more and you're, you get more excited to take that next action. And then you're identifying more wins and then you get even more excited to take the next action. And back to Fran's analogy, that's how you start setting your thermostat higher and higher mm -hmm. and higher and higher. It's, it take, it starts by you taking action before you feel like you are ever the leader. You have Maybe. to take the action first identify the wins and that's when you your belief starts to rise yeah and i was going to say what what you focus on grows when yep. you start focusing on the wins you will find more wins you will see more wins when you focus on the negative when you focus on nothing's working and and you know this is here's here's the list of all the thousands of things that are not working in my business you're going to find more things that are not working but when you start focusing on those wins no matter how tiny those wins are when you start focusing on the wins, what you focus on will grow it, every time. It's the law. Okay? It's the law. It's, it's the, the law. law. The law. <laughs> the law. It's the law. So, you know, um, a lot of this is like what, what they're all saying is about like you're stepping into that future person, right? Like, mm -hmm. like yeah. because that's what you're trying to become. You want to have this different life for yourself. And that requires you becoming right and stepping into and doing those baby steps. But when you fall back into like Fran was saying those negative, the negative thoughts, right? The, or the, we start like, um, what is it? Uh, comparitis, right? Like, like who, or, or imposter syndrome, right? Like, who am I? Can I even do this? You're then sliding back into that past self um of 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 that small past self uh, i'm not calling you small but it's like you, that smaller version because you're wanting to play bigger right you're wanting to level up so catching yourself you know being aware that man i'm sliding back into this past self person isn't going to serve you as you're trying to move into this other identity so then you know, stepping into what is that? What does that look like? What kind of thoughts should I be thinking if I'm stepping into this higher level of being right? So if, if your goal is to be that millionaire, you want to have a million dollar business, right? What do those people what are what are what are what is their daily, you know, uh, routine? What are they listening to? How are they building their their mindset? Right? And those are like, that's who you step in and start becoming. And like what Carrie said, all those little things add up 
next thing you know, you're going to look in that rear view mirror and see, man, I have grown and come so far on this journey because that's mm -hmm. exactly what's happened with all of us beaches on this. We decided to step into that future self, into the identity of who, what it would take to become that leader, that, you know, six, seven, eight figure earner before it even happened. Right. And then all the other stuff catches up. We know because we we did it. We lived it. Right. So, um, yeah. And, and one thing, one thing I want My last to thought just was like poop. It was there. <laughs> and it was like poop. <laughs> but I want to I want to add in that you know as you are as you are thinking of who you are being, start thinking about who you're serving because this building a network marketing business is not about you and thinking about how can I serve people better? How can I add more value to every to other people's lives? How can I serve them more? Okay, become that person who is, you know, helping other people, serving other people, um, because you have learned, because you've learned value that you want, that you want to share. There's no point when you learn stuff, just holding on to it. Okay. I it's, think that is such a big nugget there, Fran. Um, yeah. And I think because that was the biggest, I want to say, change for me was when I stopped like thinking about myself and my commission and my sale and, you know, uh, putting a post up to get a customer. And I really started to show up for my people, for my, my future prospect, my future team members, my future customers, my future following. And just was like, I'm just going to give value and I'm, I'm going to help every, anybody that comes to me wanting help, regardless if they join my team, or they buy, right? Yeah. And once I made that like conscious decision to, to really make it about, you know, other people, because I would see, I would see like Brandy hopping on calls and doing all this stuff with people that weren't in her team and all this stuff, right? And and I'm like, okay, so I did that mind that mind shift and I made that choice. And that's when it was like, I don't know, the universe, God, these laws of whatever, right? Like reciprocity. Um, that's really when things changed for me. And then I had people starting like for the first ever strangers reaching out saying they watched my video and it, and it helped them get through their day. Right. Like, and then it was like, oh my gosh, if I did that to one person, can you imagine all the people that haven't told me or all the people? And I, I, I broke down and cried with, when I got that message, like, so then it just, fueled me more to just keep showing up no matter what, like for no reason, for no hidden agenda, but up, but just to serve the industry, to serve um, the people, regardless if they were in my own team or they bought for me. And, and I think if I could give you guys like that was such a big nugget that Fran dropped yeah. because so many of us are like, when are the results going to come? When are the results going to come? I'm going to make this post. I'm going to go like, no one bought, no one did this, right? You, you just that think about yourself that transition in your brain that you're not doing it for that reason and you're going to show up differently and then you're going to get that return yeah i have something else i see it on her face <laughs> <laughs> uh it's also i want to add to chasing the end result we think that you know oh when i reach that goal i will be happy or when i accomplish this i will be that leader or whatever it's kind of like we attach our happiness, we attach our success to some goal that might and might not happen in the future. And it kind of makes sense in our head, right? So, but what it creates, it tells you that your life right now, your business right now, your situation right now, your house right now, your relationship right now is just not good enough. It's broken or it's not successful or it needs that thing, right, in the future that eventually you want to achieve to make it perfect and complete and successful and happy. And it's actually not how it works. So I'm actually reading a book. Um, yes. You're not I broken. You yeah. So, and it all lays it out. Yeah. And I was like, Dan, he talks about identity again. We actually teach this uh, concept, identity habit results to our 
academy students on a next level workshop because a lot of us come, oh, when I get the result, then I will be a leader, then I will be successful, then I will attract people, right? So when we wait for those results to become, to change our identity, when this process need to start from the identity in order for you to get the results. So it's kind of like almost we're doing it backwards. So I want to read little, little, um, quote from here. <laughs> uh, to do this, you must switch your focus and live the emotion of your end result now. Yeah. So you kind of like have to live in the excitement of, of what's coming, no matter, you know, how long it's going to take. It might take you two weeks, two years, 20 years, but it's coming, right? <laughs> so live in the emotion of your future right now. So that's what's kind of like, I already knew it, but it's kind of like, it's so easy. Like, just be excited about what's coming instead of being like, oh my gosh, I did this and nothing we happened. Blah, blah, blah. So whatever emotion you live in, you're creating more events, attracting more events that would give you that same emotion. So why don't we get excited about what's coming? So it's actually very easy. So you must be it before you see it. Right. We always like, oh, I have to see it to believe it or I have mm -hmm. to get results to feel like a leader, or feel successful. No, you got to be it if you want to see it. So that was kind of like also easy. I'm like, dang, I already knew that. But it's just said it by another person with different words, sometimes lands a little bit different way where it's like that makes so much more sense. So and also he says that you should feel the same whether you have success or not. Like having the result, having the success should not change how you feel about yourself or your life because you're already excited about your life. You should already feel excited and happy about your life, even if it's not perfect, right? Uh, so let me, okay. You arrive at success and failure feeling the same. The feeling is the key because that's the domain of the identity. You don't make your end result personal. You know the end result does not change you. Yes. So I'm like, dang, this is deep. Like it's so simple, <laughs> but it makes so much sense. So I loved it. I already knew all of this, but it just helps you to get back to practicing it. Like why I'm not excited about future. Like why I'm not excited about December. Like so many things are happening. Why I'm not excited about January. Why I'm not excited about 2025. Like good things are coming, you know, whatever. They are coming. But we kind of like live in that, oh my gosh, like here we go again. Like I have to make a video. I have to make a post and no one's coming. Comment, comment, no one's going to comment. What's the point? Change the energy, right? Change the energy of it. Get excited. Like, I'm going to make a post and someone's going to read it. I'm not even have to know who's going to read it, who's going to like it, but someone's going to read it. And you know what? It might change their life. You don't have to know if it's going to change their life or not. You just do the process, right? It's kind of like get excited about that. Like you are changing someone's life. Uh, like what's there to be not happy about? So. Yeah simple things but we just get stuck into like oh i want to see the result to be happy no you're freaking gonna be always unhappy <laughs> even if the result will show up you're still gonna find something to bitch about and complain about <laughs> so so that's what i loved about it absolutely so i'd love to hear what was your biggest takeaway from today's episode i would love to hear drop it in the chat uh let us know um and we will see you on the next episode. Um, we're excited. We, we're excited to show up for you every week um, and share more hacks to help you shift your mindset and become that badass that is hiding inside of you or reveal the badass that is hiding inside of you. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. <laughs>